how to run Facebook ads effectively in any local niche. If you don't have a good offer for your client, your ads will never work. The format is very, very simple. Most people mess up how they set up their ads. The eight ad set method is my go-to. It's what I launch first in every niche. Each of these is an ad set. The offer sucks, expect bad results. One mistake I see people make is they'll put like 10 ads underneath an ad set. That equals results on every platform. You can't copy and paste nine to five for you. Let's dive into client results. I'm gonna give you guys a warning for client results and then I'm gonna hand it off to Isaac. Let's start off by saying this. Here's a warning. Some clients will fail. Some clients will fail. It is normal. It's impossible for you to have a 100% success rate. It's impossible. Unless you like maybe only have one client. But like, okay, let's say this. If you have more than 10 clients, it's impossible to have a 100% success rate. It doesn't exist. Check this out. This is called a bell curve. This shows the averages of populations. Okay, look at this. Averages of people. This is a really good one. Because you could see some faces. It makes it even clearer to see. There's some people at the bottom, like this lady right here. She's going to fail no matter what. Even if you have the best marketing system in the world. Let's say you literally... You can literally call her leads and close them for her and she'll still fail. Like you could literally do the lead gen, call her leads, close them, and then she'll find a way to mess it up and have to give them a refund. That's this end right here. This lady right here, she's going to be successful with or without you. Even if you did nothing for her, she's going to crush it. If you told her, hey, we have to be successful with direct mail, she would find a way. If you said, hey, you could only be successful with referrals, she would find a way. If, if you don't really do anything, she'll be successful. That's this end of the spectrum. Most people are going to be right here in the middle. Just Most people are going to be like this guy. Most people. Your job as an agency is to move people to the right. Your job as an agency is not to is not to overcome the laws of nature. You will not beat this cur this graph. You will not be able to stop people from being at the bottom. There's always going to be people at the bottom. Your job is to help the people that are in the middle have a ch higher chances of success. Your job is to have help the people at the very top succeed faster and more efficiently. Again, they're going to be successful without you. So your job is just to make it easier and faster. And your job is to help these people right here hopefully get more towards the middle. They're not going to be seven-figure entrepreneurs, but maybe they could have more things in their life that they want. And then your job is to hopefully help these people have a shot at even success in general. But you will never beat this graph. There's always going to be, in order for you to have someone that succeeds, you need to have someone that fails. You can't have, it's like, if you want to have light, you need to have dark. If you want to have black, you need to have white. Same thing. <clears throat> this is really important, guys, because most of you guys get so stuck on clients. You got So many people will literally build their business around this client. And if she's not getting results, they'll stop everything that they're doing. And they'll do everything in their power to help this one client when there's all these other people that you can help and support. But you get so stuck on this one. Yeah, and to, to add into that, sometimes you'll land a client in the same area. You have one client in an area for like a month. They hate the service, tell you the leads are the worst thing ever. Say it's terrible. They leave, you close another client 30 seconds down the street, they start crushing it. So like <laughs> you can even see the, the bell curve difference within the same area. It's fascinating. That's happened to me multiple times. Yeah. Same leads, by the way, it's literally the same ad, the same, it's literally the same thing. Yeah. Um, also guys, who here has heard that you need money to make money? Who here has heard that saying? Okay, guess what? You need clients to get client results. So like 
most of you guys are so worried about client results, you don't even have a client. And then also, you also the, the more clients that you have, and you can get statistical significance and more data, the easier it is for you to go out and get better client results. Here's why. Let's say you have 10 clients and two of them are really crushing it. And the eight are not. Let's say that eight are actually sucking, but two are really crushing it. Then you could reach out to the top two and say, hey, what are you guys doing? What are you doing differently? Why are you seeing success? And then you could take that, bring it back to the eight and help them all improve. But if you only had three clients, what if those three were a part of the eight that sucked and you didn't have the two? One of the reasons why our coaching program, Agency Lab, has gotten the best results compared to uh, like many other coaching programs is also because I do a very good job at taking what other people are doing and having them share it with a community. I do. A, I am very strict about that because I know that's going to increase everyone's level. So the takeaway is you need clients to get client results. And the more clients you have, the better client results you get. But everyone is almost trying to have a perfect client results system right when they're starting out. And it actually takes you to have a lot of clients. I would say this. If you guys can generate leads and book appointments for them, Pretty much you're good enough. Your results are good enough to get started and go out and get clients. Yo, is this resonating, guys? Let me know in the chat if it is. Two more things, and then uh, we'll dive in. These are just some warnings because it's really important. At the Apple Store, if you guys break your iPhone, do they stop? Do they shut down the Apple store? If your computer, Cole, if your computer was broken, would you like, would Apple stop doing business? No, they're going to keep selling. They're going to keep selling. You guys, it's like, as soon as you get one client that had bad results, everyone gets so paralyzed and then you stop selling and you're like, I got to shut down my business. And it's like, you have to follow the airplane analogy. You have to put a mask on yourself first before you can put the mask on the next person. Just like they tell you, you need to take care of yourself first before you take care of your clients. If you really want to be able to succeed, the more resources, money, and time that you have, the better client results that you'll have. But most of you guys don't have any oxygen. You literally quite you quite literally don't have an oxygen mask on and then you start to suffocate because you don't have money, resources, or time and then you can't help your clients. So the Apple store analogy is this. If your clients aren't getting the best results, don't stop selling. What if what if you're actually, what if you have one client and it's these people right here and then you stop selling thinking that you're the problem, but what if they're the problem? So don't 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 shut down the Apple Store. Keep selling. At the Apple Store, they do a great job. They have the Genius Bar, and they keep selling. You could see they're doing it at the same time. That's how you guys need to operate. How do I get clients better results, and how do I get more clients? It's not one or the other. You need both. You need both. And then last but not least, guys, this is the most important lesson I could teach you about client results. We're about to give you the entire marketing system. We're going to show you how to run ads, how to do go high level, how to book the appointments. We're about to share every, everything with you. But most business owners suck. Yet most marketing agencies, what they do is try to solve the problem of them sucking by creating better marketing. But in reality, the way that you make a business owner not suck is by helping them become a better entrepreneur, not with better marketing. Yeah, most of you guys are solving the problem of client results by better go high level, better ads. Guys, when my clients, when I had like 200 clients, we were running lead form ads and like we didn't have like a our go high level sequence sucked. It sucked. It was terrible. We didn't call the clients or we didn't call the leads for them. We didn't set the appointments for them. We actually had the clients set their own appointments. This was way back when, yet they got crazier re results than they got some crazy results. And the reason why 
is because I train them to be better entrepreneurs, just like I'm training you guys to be better entrepreneurs. I help them with sales. I help them with mindset. I help them with identity. Who do they need to become in order to be successful? Most of you guys are trying to solve the problem of client results just by improving the marketing system. But guess what? Let's say that your marketing system is eight out of 10, or let's even say seven out of 10, and then you make it a nine out of 10, but they still suck at business. They're a two out of 10. Two things are going to happen. Number one, they're going to blame you because most people aren't willing to accept the fact that they suck. And then number two, it's actually going to expose them even more. If your marketing system is too good, but they, they don't have the mindset, the sales ability, the identity, they're going to fail. And they're going to, it's going to expose them even more. It's almost like they can't even handle it. So it's, not, it's, it's, it would be better for you to go from a two to a five than from a seven to a nine. You got just, I'm going to, we're about to share everything for the marketing system, but I need you guys to also focus on improving the actual business owner, improving the entrepreneur. And I'll show you guys how to do that as well. Not today. We'll do it on, on the second call, but that's really important because everyone is trying to solve cl client results just through the ads, the go high level. But guys, as you know, it's not about this. I give everyone the same script then how come there's people that like, we just interviewed Tony in our program who went from zero to 17 K a month in 90 days. It's the same script that I give everyone else. Hey, is this the best place to ask a question? It's the same script. What makes the difference is that he had the mindset, the sales ability, the identity. It's not script, but most of you guys, when you're getting client results, that's all you worry about. All right. Is this making sense guys? All right, yes. now, now we give you guys, with that in mind, let's go over the, the ads in the go high level. So Isaac, take it, but guys, again, for those of you that don't know Isaac, he's uh, my business partner. He used, he used to run a seven-figure agency. Now we both run Agency Lab, and he is literally a genius when it comes to fulfillment, ads, everything. He does all my media buying, and uh, he's run ads in pretty much every niche that you can imagine. And if you can't imagine it, he could, he still ran ads in that niche, probably <laughs> even then, theoretical niches. Yeah. Like if you, <laughs> if you, if you can think it, he's ran ads and he's also ran ads for agencies. So he's booked thousands and thousands of appointments for agencies. So yeah, take it away. Awesome. Let me pull up. There we go. Share screen. Oh, Joe, you have to allow a uh, screen sharing. All right. I'm all good. Oh, there we go. Cool. Can everybody see my uh, screen all right? Yep. Perfect. Presentation. Cool. So what we're going to go over is how to run Facebook ads effectively in any local niche. Um, I know last week we did one or two weeks ago. Now we did one on TikTok ads. TikTok ads are great. Uh, they're up and coming. They're, they're, they work in a lot of niches, but Facebook is still uh, really good for local. Um, it, it, a good agency will have a distribution between Facebook ads and TikTok ads, depending on your niche, depending on the areas that you're advertising it, of course. Um, so th these Facebook ad methods are super dialed in. These, these are the product of like, I don't know how many years now, <laughs> like at least like five years of, of running ads uh, on Facebook specifically. So um, these are super dialed in. And if you guys are running anything local and we're also going to go over statewide niches, this is really uh, going to be good. So the foundation of performing ads is a solid offer. Um, if you don't have a good offer for your client, your ads will never work. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, it doesn't matter what images you put on in them, the, the ads will not perform and you're just going to waste your client's money. It's your job when you close a client to push them into a good offer. 
Uh, it's like part of your role as an agency owner. If they won't go with a good offer, you should probably refund them and send them on their way. There's a lot of other clients that will pay you money that will kid, run bro. a good offer. Sorry. Um, okay, let me, uh, offers that are proven. So I'm going to go through these and I'll show you guys. I'm going to go through these, list them out, and then um, we'll go through. I'll show you some examples of these different offers. So, oh, Goldside Agency, can you uh, mute yourself? I think we're getting some like feedback there. My bad. You're good. Uh, discount service. This is one of the most popular ones. So $21 chiropractic adjustment, x-rays and exam. For the discounted service offer, the price needs to be below 50 if you want consistent performance, you can, in some good markets, you can price it above 50. I've seen things priced as high as like 80 uh, for, the, for the service. Um, so you can price above 50. Just know that you're going to encounter a lot of variability depending on the markets. The best discounted services are below 50. So just be aware of that. Uh, if if this service is like an expensive service. So for example, um, there's some like women's hair treatments that are like starting like 250 or like 300. What I like to do for these, because again, the rule of $50, I like to do percent off or um, dollars off. So an example would be 50% off all Botox injections. We're not saying the price, but we're saying we're, we're still conveying that there's a steep discount. So if something's $300 normally, uh, instead of putting it's $150 on the ad, which will usually crash and burn, I'll say 50% off. 50% off looks a hell of a lot better on Facebook ads than a $150 service. So if, if the client has a really expensive service, percent off or money off uh, is really good. You can also do like $500 off. Like for example, $500 off dental implants. We're not saying the price because dental implants are like $10,000, but we're still conveying that there's a good discount involved. Um, third, and I'll show you guys some examples of these because this one might not make the most sense as I just stated out loud, a new state program. So th this is best for mortgage, roofing, solar, uh, things that are run statewide. In these niches, discounts, you can use them, that they can work, uh, but you want to convey that there's this new thing that came out. There's this new program. They're, they're, getting, they're giving discounts across the board for all, all roofing or all veterans and mortgage or solar panels are now basically paid for by the state. You want to describe it as this new novel program that just came out that can get them huge savings on whatever niche it is. Um, so I'll show you guys some of these. It'll make more sense when I show you visually. Uh, fourth, let me move this. Uh, discount plus free. So this is one that works really well in saturated markets. Um, if you've saturate the market yourself, or there's just a lot of competition, what you can do is, for example, $21 chiropractic adjustment plus free massage. Um, th this is works really, really well. And if you've been running ads in an area for like a year, <laughs> like no matter what you do, they're still fatiguing, changing images doesn't work, everything else. Or if you go into an area where there's like 50 other chiropractors, throwing in something free is a really good way to uh, set your offer apart from the others. Uh, fifth, free quote or free consultation. This is a really simple offer. It works in less saturated uh, niches. So like flooring is a good example. Um, even dental implants, free consultation actually works there. So, so if, if the niche doesn't have a ton of competition, uh, free quote or free consultation can work if it's a standard thing in that niche to do. So let's go into, I'm, I'm going to, you guys will get access to these slides, uh, at the end of this. So, um, you, you'll get access to the swipe file. Yo, Isaac. Yeah. Real quick. Did you talk about if the offer sucks, the clients is not going to work? Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if the, the clients like. I want you to run an offer for a $150 chiropractic exam without the adjustment. I, it got to the point where, and Joel did this too, we wouldn't even bring those people on. 
if they don't go with a solid proven offer, we won't even bring them on as a client. We're going to say something, Joel. Yeah. If the offer sucks, expect bad results, period. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. No, no amount of lasers shining on women in your ads is going to fix the fact that like your, your offer is terrible. Um, so offer has to be there for anything to work at all. Um, so here's a free consultation. One, uh, let's scroll down. $25 off first IV therapy session. Uh, free consultation plus 500 off. This works These are all, this is like our entire swipe file and it has ads for so many different niches. And you guys can see kind of how it works. Yeah, no, no matter what niche you guys are in, you can look at the swipe file. Even if you, you close like a funeral home client or something crazy, like something completely off the wall, you can go into the swipe file, look at ads that are proven and just modify the language on them for your client and they will work. So get a solid offer from your client, use one of these proven templates and you can produce something that works really well. Um, $35 teeth clean, that's another discount. Most common you're gonna see on here is discounts because that's what you do in most niches. Let me scroll down so no, you guys can look see at, some. Yeah. Yeah, let me scroll down so you can see some of the mortgage ones. Um, so attention, Indiana, first home buyers, if possibilities, realtors don't waste, waste their time and won't be able to afford the home. So the, these are some examples of, here's an, here's an excellent one for veterans, new VA program. See if you qualify in 60 seconds or less, attention California veterans, new assistance program. So this is the type of ad I like to run in uh, roofing, solar, mortgage. Basically, Southeast Wisconsin homeowners with roof damage may now qualify for up to 100% deductible assistance on qualifying roofs. So new Wisconsin roof assistance program. Th these ads crush in these niches. There's no discount, really. Um, the, the, the entire sale of, of becoming of somebody opting in through this is the fact that, Hey, this is a new cool program that is for something that I want. So let me check it out. So those work really well. But guys, if you're like, do we have an, do you have one for my niche? It's a, it's a good question, but Look, ultimately, it's very simple. Can you go to like the one with your with that chiropractor that was jacked? Yeah. Hey, wait, let me state this really quick before I scroll away from this part. No worries, no worries. Okay. Um, when it, guys, when we're tying out new state programs, it doesn't matter if there's actually a new state program. Like this is this is an ad I ran for uh, business loans. I just called it the Hero Business Loan Program. I just named it that. I like the abbreviation. Okay. You should have called it the Ruble. I should I, legitimately, that was a mistake on my part, not to call all the abbreviations. <laughs> <laughs> it's approval program, <laughs> but like, and this had crush. If anybody's doing small business loans, those ads crush, but yeah, let me go back to the jacked chiropractor. Yeah, there we go. Him being jacked is why this ad works, by the way. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember seeing that ad and I was like, Isaac, is this your client? <laughs> and then you're like, yeah. And then, anyways, I just remember that. Um, so like, if you actually read the ad, you guys can take this and modify it for like. Someone asked, "What about cool body sculpting?" Here's how you guys would do this. Let me just. I'm gonna share my screen if you don't mind. Oh yeah, let me stop. Sharing. Actually, no. Wait, actually, let me share first, and then I'll go back to it. Yeah, that's fine. Someone asked about. Sculpting. Let me just pull this up. All right. You guys can literally go on Groupon and look up your niche or your service to get ideas for different offers. You can literally see the different offers that they have and just get ideas. If you have no idea what to do for an offer, the other thing that you could do, let's see, the other thing that you could do is like literally go on Google and see the ads and see if there's any offers. That's another thing that you could do, like dental implants, Philadelphia, for example. And then like, let 
this one's just doing a free consultation, but you can see like you can get ideas for different uh for different offers. So you guys can go on Google. You guys can go on Groupon. The other thing that you guys can do is literally, this is going to be a hack for you guys. This is a little bit like gray area, but whatever. It's, it's, you can do it. It's legal. You can look at other seven-figure agency owners. Go look at their client list. And then go find their Facebook pages on the ads library. And then see what, what offers they're running. So you're like, oh, um, I'm trying to work with, let's say, roofers. And then I know my friend, Isaac, is a roofer, seven-figure agency owner, and he's posting his client's testimonials. I'm going to go look at a client testimonial. They're like, oh, that's Philadelphia Roofing. All right, let me look at their page. Boom, I could see exactly what offer they're running. So you could also like ad hack. Obviously, I would tell you to uh, don't literally copy and paste, but you can at least know what offer they're running. And then if you go back to Isaac, your um, the Google Doc. Yeah, I want to. As you guys can see, the format is very, very simple. It's like, hey, calling out the city. Then you ask a question that's either going to tap into their pain or desires. Then you say, hey, I'm Dr. Blank, or, you know, we're Blank Med Spa, we're Blank Gym, and we're doing something amazing to promote our gym. For a limited time, we're giving away this, 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 and that for $21. We're giving away a 30-day pass to our gym for $7. We're doing a six, for, for a limited time, we're doing a six-week weight loss program. And... Um, like a six week weight loss challenge. And if you don't lose weight, we'll pay you $500. Is that the Alex Ramosi thing? That's, that's an example. Yeah. I don't know if that's exactly it though. Yeah. He used something like that. Yeah. I, I know quick hack. Like if you want his exact offer, you can, uh, I think he posted it on his profile year, like a long time ago though. You might have to scroll for a while, but it doesn't matter. Um, the idea is, that could be your ad. It could literally be that simple. Let me actually pull up an example. And then what you're going to do is swap out your offer and your client and their city with that copy. And then for the state program, again, you would swap out the offer with the same kind of structure that Isaac has laid out. But it's pretty plug and play. Like as you guys can see, most of the ads, whether it's Cairo or Laser or Gym, kind of follow the same structure. Let me pull this up. Do you want a screen share? Yeah, I just have to find it first. This ad right here generated thousands of leads. Thousands. Look how simple it was. I even took Isaac's copy. And I made it even simpler. Hey, city, we're doing something awesome to promote our office. We're giving away this. One person, new patients only, click below. Literally, this ad generated tens of thousands of dollars for this office. They crush it. And what's wild is that it's even simpler. So like the framework, guys, is very, very similar. If you're like, if you can't even write if you can't even copy and paste Isaac's full script or copy, you can literally take this and just swap out the offer right here. It's like, hey, Philadelphia, we're doing something amazing to awesome to promote our gym. We're giving away 27 vouchers for a six-week weight loss challenge, which includes personal training, six sessions, um, a full meal plan, and it's only for $21. Limit one per person, new patients only. We actually took out the word per person as like a pattern interrupt. We did a typo on purpose. Click the button below to grab your voucher. So you can literally swap it out. I just wanted to show you that so you guys can see how simple this can be. That ad generated tens of thousands of dollars for that chiropractor. And 
we didn't even like our go high level sequence was like four text messages. So I think you guys are overcomplicating this. And by the way, as a side note, Isaac and I did a whole video on how to run this for TikTok. And what's fascinating is it's kind of the same exact thing, but instead of it being like a picture with copy, it's a video and the text is on the video. It's just that TikTok robo voice reading things over now. That's the main development from Facebook to TikTok. It's just robo voice instead of text. Yeah. So does this, uh, is this making sense guys? Cool. Yep. I just wanted to share that example and kind of walk you guys through it for, so for body sculpting, you could either go on Google, like look it up, see what offers they have Go on Groupon or look for a med spa that's working with cool sculpting. That's crushing it. And then go find their clients page and go to the ads library. So like ad library. And then you could literally search for them. And then you could see their ads. It's public information. All right, Isaac, back to you. All right, cool. Let me share screen. Okay. Um, slideshow. So uh, where, okay, so we've got the offer. You've got a proven offer from your client. You've got some proven ad structures that you're going to modify and uh, use for your client. The next step is uh, that most people mess up on is how they set up their ads on Facebook. Um, it's pretty simple, but a lot of people structure their ad sets in a way that really limits their ability to get results. So like they'll set up, they'll set up some targeting and they'll be running like local ads and they'll include like a bunch of interest targeting or even worse, they'll just include a few interests that they think match their niche. Um, these things will kill your results really quickly. Uh, even if you have a good offer, it, it won't perform nearly as good. Usually it's like double or triple the CPL uh, it, it compared to if you were to set it up like how I'm about to show you. There's two main ways to set up uh, ad sets on Facebook. I'm going to show you guys on the slides here, and then I'm going to show you me quickly build some out within the platform so you can see what it looks like to actually put these live. Um, the two main ways, the first is called the eight ad set method, and the second is called the big ad set method. The eight ad set method is my go-to. It's what I launch first uh, in every niche. Um, the big ad set method is a backup. Some people reverse those. A lot of people these days seem to like the big ad set method first, and then they go to the eight ad set method. It's not my preference, but people do it that way. Now, you'll see here at the top, each ad set I'm about to show you needs to be set at a budget of your ideal lead cost. So let's say you're running ads for a chiropractor and like the best lead cost you can imagine for a Cairo is like five bucks per lead. That's like really, really good. Uh, some markets you can get less than that, but five bucks per lead. Every ad set within the eight ad set method that I'm going to show you needs to be set at five dollars uh, per ad set. But let's say you know in your niche, you don't really get leads below $10. $10 is like the best case scenario for your niche. You can start your ad sets at $10 a piece. It just depends on the niche, depends on the client budget. Um, all these factor into this. So here's what the eight ad set method is. I'll just put these out. It's actually easier if they're just all on screen. Each of these is an ad set when you launch. Um, and what's in there is is what you want to target. And these are all open targeting, meaning no interest. And th this is really the way to target for local guys. Don't throw in interest targeting. Keep your, keep your targeting completely open and set it up like this. So these are all open age ranges, men 20 to 54, men 20 to 54. But what you're going to do is you're going to change two factors. Number one, the radius. Number two, if you're targeting everyone in the area, versus just residents of the area. Facebook has these two options. I'll show you where they are. Um, the reason, and, and the radius doesn't have to be five and 10. If your client is super strict of like, uh, you know, I don't want these big radiuses. I can't serve people at 10 miles. Do three and six or three and seven. It doesn't really matter exactly what the radiuses are. What matters is that you're launching a lot of, um, a lot of variations 
because the way Facebook works is when you give Facebook an audience, let's say you throw Facebook a hundred people, for example, that's very low reach, but let's say you throw it a hundred people. Facebook is going to find a segment of like 10 to 20 of those people that it thinks are going to be winners. And it's going to show all of your ads to them. And if you duplicate the same ad set 50 times, it's going to find a different segment within that hundred people every single one of those times. So if you duplicate an ad set a hundred times, it's going to segment out different groups of people within that hundred. It's just how Facebook works. It's kind of random. This method, the eight ad set method takes advantage of that natural variability in Facebook and how it targets smaller segments of people within larger segments. And it finds winners. This crushes. Whenever you launch this, pretty much 100% of the time, you're going to find winners. <laughs> like at least two or three of these are just going to blow the rest out of the water. And then you can just coast for the rest of your month, rest of the month uh, for your client. So I'm going to build this out right now because I, I think it's way easier to visualize when you see me uh, build it out than just listen to me talk about theoretical ad targeting. So we're going to create a new campaign. We're going to have leads. We're going to name this men, five, everyone. One second, let me figure out where to put the Zoom search bar. Okay. Special ad categories, not needed. We're going to go to, actually, that's the campaign name. We're just name this test. Ad set name, men, five, everyone. Uh, let's do instant forms. Sure. Daily budget. Let's pretend we're doing a chiropractor. We're going to do $5 for the daily budget. Location. Let's choose an address. 312. I wish this was more exciting. I know this, <laughs> this is going to be the slow part, but it'll be that when you guys are going to go build out your ads, it'll be valuable to have this on, on recording. No, everyone's always like, I want client service delivery. It's like, it's just like watching Isaac yeah. work. <laughs> You're going to get what you ask for. Um, <laughs> okay. So five mile, right? Everyone means people living in or recently in this location. This used to be called everyone in this location. Um, am I drawing that? Oh, somebody's. Was it drawing. me? No, I don't know who that is. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so guys, actually, this is the secret. Wait, wait, is that? Wait, hold on. Let me see. Really high performing ads. You have to draw red all over your screen. How do you delete that? I don't know. <laughs> Yo, what the Does hell? anybody know how to delete? Uh, delete. We did. We made it more exciting. I, I I don't think I did that. I think there was somebody else. Because it said somebody's iPhone. <laughs> how did we get rid of that? All right. Who knows how to get know. rid of it? Damn. All right. All right. Unshare and reshare. Try that. Good idea. Okay, cool. Yeah, if it's still there. All right. I was gonna say <laughs> if you guys could not draw on the screen, that'd be lit. Um, okay. 20. Oh, yeah, to, we're yeah, we're we're good. Yeah, we're good now. 20 to 54. Doesn't always have to be that, depends on the client, but we're just doing an example. Men. Uh, languages. I actually like to choose English. Th this can affect your results depending on your area. Manual placements, Facebook and Instagram newsfeed only is what I go with by default. You can test the automatic placements if you want. Uh, a lot of the times news feeds is the one that outperforms. CRM integration. Don't need any of that. Cool. Now, a lot of people ask how many ads to test underneath the ad set. If you have proven ads, you really only need one. 
for most of my clients, you know, if, if you know your ads work, you're using proven scripts, uh, you really only need one ad per ad set. If you want to test, like, let's say you want to test different images, don't do any more than three. It's if you do like I, one, one mistake I see people make is they'll put like 10 ads underneath an ad set that kills results on every platform. It's, it's, it's a mistake. It messes with the algorithm, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. It always messes with it. Um, I'm not going to go into the actual ad creation here. You, you guys have the swipe file. You're just plugging in the image, the primary text and the headline. It's nothing uh, complicated, but remember it real quick. Yeah. Well, I mean, here, I'll send you a, I'll send you a, okay. I mean, it's just, or I just don't want people to be like, how do I do the creative? <laughs> yeah. Just pick any image. Yeah. Okay. And then just in the copy here in the, no, that's not good enough. No, put, um, Hey, city. All right, that's fine. And then in the headline. Free Kyber exams. You guys get the point. You have to use your imagination, like 1%. You can, you can see what we're doing. Um, As one, one of my favorite people said, if you can't copy and paste... I don't know if you guys know Tony Lee, but he goes, if you can't copy and paste nine to five for you, <laughs> he said, if you can't even copy and paste nine to five, <laughs> he's like, you're pretty much screwed if you can't even copy and paste. So I'm going to show you guys me create a, uh, a lead form real quick. I do more volume. I, uh, remove the greeting and I just use the image from the ad questions. Full name, email, and then I do phone number as well. Description, you do have to enter a message here. Information below to get your chiropractic voucher. Nothing else needs added. Privacy policy. Make sure you actually link to a privacy policy. Facebook does actually scan those. And then here, you just link them to a Calendly. So if you created a, a calendar for the client, just direct link them uh, to the Calendly, that way they can schedule in. Now, view website, then this is where you would link Calendly. Come, publish. Cool. Okay. We created the the creative. Obviously, you guys will have better ones. Next, we're going to duplicate this, and we're going to make it men ten mile everyone. So just change this five to a 10, delete that. And we are going to, all we have to do here is change the radius. By the way, you would never do 10 miles in an area like this. You're like crossing three rivers, New York City, all that sort of stuff. But for this example, after you create men 10 mile, everyone, you're going to duplicate both. So highlight both, hit duplicate, duplicate. Then what you're going to do at the very top here, hit edit each ad set and make it R, men 10 R, men 5 R for uh, residents only. For the targeting, we're going to select one at a time. So it's these two ads right here on the left. And we're going to make this people living in this location. Let's go to the 10 mile version and make this people living in this location. Cool. So that's the most efficient way to duplicate that out. So we have our men five, everyone, men 10, everyone, men five residents, and men 10 residents.
Then what we're going to do is select them all, duplicate them, duplicate. Then we're going to hit edit each ad set. And we're going to change this to women, women, five R, women, 10, everyone, women, five, everyone. And we're going to duplicate the stuff that says copy here on the end. Save to draft. Can we change gender all at the same time? We can. That's perfect. Gender, women, and we're done. For This is all. Did we end up with eight? Eight ad set. Also called the eight ad set method for a reason. Now, the way you run this. Oh, let me show you guys. Let me show you guys how to launch it at midnight. Um, so here's how to launch ads at midnight using automated rules. So highlight all of you. First of all, you're going to turn all these off because you don't want them running. If you launch ads in the middle of the day, Facebook will blow through your budget and get you worse results. Um, so you're going to, you're going to publish these. You're going to turn them all off. Then you're going to highlight all of them and you're going to hit create a new rule, custom rule, hit next rule name, turn on at midnight, uh, apply to the eight ad sets action needs to be turn on ad sets. Now conditions lifetime spent is smaller than one, uh, time range maximum daily at 12 AM. Then we're going to hit create. Now, what this will do when you turn these ads off, uh, they will turn on at midnight or 12 a.m. the following day. So that makes sure that your ads spend their ad spend in the most efficient way possible. Um, you're going to let these run for 48 hours. You only let them run for two days. They don't need longer than that. Everybody who tells you that like, oh, Facebook has like this learning phase. And if your ad sets suck, you just got to let them run for four months and eventually they'll perform. They never perform. <laughs> if they don't perform right out of the gate, they're pretty much never going to perform. And you're going to use so much money hoping that they perform when they never will. Uh, out of these eight ad sets, you should get a performer. Um 95, 99% of the time, you're going to find at least a performer or two out of these eight asset methods that you can just sustain your client on for the rest of the month. Uh, now, you might be asking yourself, you know, this spends a lot of ad spend up front. What if my client has a limited budget? First of all, you should close your clients on as high of an ad spend budget as possible. The more ad spend you close them on, the more results they're going to get, the more they're going to like you and actually retain. Um, but let's say you do have a low ad spend. What you need to do is after you run this for the first 48 hours, you need to calculate how much ad spend you have left for the month and see how many of these you can justify leaving on. Um, so you have to run that calculation uh, and see how many ads that you can leave on and still stay within their ad budget reasonably. But ideally, you should, your client should have enough ad budget to where you can leave as many of these on as possible that perform. Um, okay, Th that's a ad set method. Uh, let me go into what to do if that doesn't work because it does occasionally not work. We already covered some of the logic. Uh, it works because of Facebook randomness. Uh, if it fails, what you're going to do is go to the big ad set method. Here's what the big ad set method is. Both genders, everyone in the area, 25 or 20 to 54, at the highest daily budget your client can afford. And maybe even talk to the client, ask them for more budget, because at this point, eight ad set method already failed. You want to try the big ad set method. Big ad set method saves some accounts. Um, if they're not working, this can save your results a lot of the time. So let me show you guys what what the what this is. I'll build it out for you in the in the ads manager. The eight the big ad set method. We're just going to duplicate one of these. And I'll show you how to set it up.
daily budget. Ideally, you're going to use all your clients daily budget. So like 30 or 40, if they can afford it, you're going to do the biggest radius your client will allow. So if they're like, we can serve people up to 15 miles, put it at like 16 miles, like really do the absolute biggest radius your client will let you do. Um, often that's like 15 to 20 miles, depending on the area. You want it to be people living in or recently, which means everyone in this location. You want both genders, 20 to 54, English, manual placements, news feeds only. Perfect. Again, let this run 48 hours before you decide if it's performing or not. So let it run for two days. If it's not getting leads at a decent cost, cut it. And then you can you can go into uh, some of the troubleshooting methods I'm going to show you here here soon. Um, so troublesho troubleshooting. Let me screen share this. First, eight ad set method. Second, big ad set method. Number three, change your creatives. Now, you'll notice change creatives is down here on the towards the bottom of the list. A lot of people change your creatives first when things don't perform. If you guys are using creatives based on the swipe file, they should be decent enough to not justify changing them first. If you guys are using good scripts, good images, you're more likely going to get results out of changing your ad set structure, like I should in step one and step two here, than you will changing creatives. That being said, be honest with yourself, are your creatives good? If they are, change them as the third option. And number four, and finally, change offer. Uh, if everything has been tried, it, you have to talk to the client and the offer has to be sweetened up. So like if it's a Cairo, you have to be like, hey, we're gonna have to you know, either decrease the cost of the adjustment or throw in an adjustment if they didn't already have one or um, throw in a free massage. All of those are options and the, the offer can depend on the niche, but this is the order in which you go about troubleshooting low performing ads. So here's an advanced eight ad set method you can try. This is a Hail Mary I use for super tough areas and we won't do this build out. You guys know how to build this out based on what I just showed you. I don't think you need to watch me uh, change eight different age ranges. But what you do is it's 10 mile everyone for all the ad sets. It's same gender for all the ad sets. So if you've got, uh, it, this is like your last option, by the way. So if up until this point, you've gotten at least some leads, you've gotten some conversions, but they've been super expensive, but you notice like, hey, at least most of them are coming from men, then do all of your ad sets as men. And what you're going to do is you're going to test the uh, age ranges. So you have 20 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60, everyone. Then you, have, then you have the same thing, but with residents. Basically, what you're doing here is you're trying to get Facebook to find at least a couple segments of people that will perform. And if this works and you find some that will perform, you can repeat this same process with women. You should only have to do this like one out of 50 clients. Uh, it, the eight ad set method and the big ad set method are going to work for you the vast, vast majority of the time. This is reserved for the super tough clients and super tough areas that are just not working with anything else. Um, Joel, did you want to cover anything before we jump into statewide ads? Am I missing anything? Did I gloss over anything too quickly? Hey. He said he'll be right back. Oh, okay. I was only in chat. Um, that's fine. Uh, okay. So everything we just talked about was for local businesses. Kairos, uh, med spas, um, hair salons, everything, everything local. If you're doing statewide lead gen niches, which are like solar, personal injury, mortgage, life insurance some roofing clients some roofing clients can cover like half of a state so it's 
basically statewide as far as the build out, you're going to want to build it out differently than what I just showed you guys. So for local lead gen, you want to use lead ads for 99% of niches, lead ads are what you want to use. For statewide lead gen, you want to use surveys most of the time. Uh, for all these niches, I personally use surveys. Um, let me show you guys what a survey is. So here's an example of a really good survey. This is an extremely high performing mortgage survey. This is linked in the slides. Although this was built on Alchemer. So if you're using go high level, um, I have a, I have a good go high level template, but you're going to have to like look at this and rebuild it visually, but it's not too hard because go high level has a really solid survey builder. Um, but I did link this for you guys. So you can at least look at it. So basically what a survey is when it comes to a statewide niche is ask the qualifying questions and then get name, phone number, email at the end. As many of the qualifying questions should be uh, radio as possible. Radio is these circles that you fill out and it should also auto progress. So it should show you one question at a time. And when you click on it, it should auto progress to the next question. If you don't do this, if you just shove all your questions on one page and you're like, Hey, scroll down and just fill all these out. It will destroy your cost per conversion. You will not get nearly as cheap leads as if you have an auto progressing radio button quiz. This is the cheapest way to get conversions from a survey. I've ran probably millions of leads through surveys at this point. And this is how I build all of them. And it's the most proven way. So when you build in high level, make sure it, it functions like this. So what I'm going to show you guys is a full build out on how to build out statewide ads. Um, this is also basically a training on how to uh, install the pixel, um, verify domains, set conversions for aggregated events. So we're going to cover a decent amount here uh, that it's not just going to show you how to build statewide ads. It's going to show you how to build any ads ever that need a landing page. So give me one second. Let me log into my Yo, notes. Isaac. Yeah. Sorry, I had a, someone called me. I had to take it, but um, wanted to uh, ask, is there anything that you need from me right now? Uh, no, I just wanted to see if you had input before I jumped into statewide, but we already jumped in, so. No, I already told you guys what you needed to hear. Okay, cool. Yeah, the yeah, offer su if the offer sucks, it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you do is it when they have multiple locations? Is that why you use statewide? No, what he means by statewide campaigns is niches where it's ran statewide. So like a mortgage niche isn't ran locally within a city. It's ran statewide. If you're doing personal injury, attorneys want leads for the whole state because they're, uh, they pass the bar in the whole state. Um, right. Whereas like oh, a, yes. a, you can't run a gym statewide. Like if you're in, Pennsylvania, one end and Jim, you're not going to drive, you know, six hours or four hours to get to the other side of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, statewide niches are great, by the way. They're some of my favorite and uh, getting leads for them is super easy because you have such a, such a wide population base and the clients tend to do really well. Like I, I love mortgage uh, especially. And the reason you say you do survey, is it for the pixel, uh, the pixel data or is it just uh, better results or what's the reason to do survey instead of lead forms for statewide? Yeah, a couple things. Number one, it does it does tend to get better results. The cost per qualified conversion uh, does get better results. Number two, um, you can actually filter the leads with survey. So if your client's like, I only want, you know, 650 credit score plus, you can actually set that up in a survey, which you can't really do on lead ads. Um, a survey can actually choose to only fire the pixel if they're qualified. That way you train the pixel over time to only find more qualified leads. Um, and it makes a big difference. If you have a, if you have a trained pixel in like roofing or like personal injury, uh, your cost per conversion over time 
you can outcompete like everybody in the market, especially if you run all your clients on the same pixel and just really train that conversion data. Um, yeah. Makes sense. Thank you. Ooh, one more thing, Isaac. Lead yeah. forms versus landing pages. Do you guys talk about that? Uh, yeah, I talked about for local, basically really? most local niches, you want to use lead forms. Um, landing pages are best for the, uh, the statewide stuff, surveys. To be stuff. honest, guys, personally, I had a point in time where I switched everyone to a landing page and I got worse results. I got better results doing lead form and getting more volume, but actually teaching my clients not to suck at sales than I did trying to make the quality better. Fuck, yeah. f look, honestly, I'm so done. Fuck lead quality. That should not exist. All right. It's, it's, a, it's either a lead or it's not a lead. That's it. Everyone's like wanting a lead to just, I'll say this. Well, this is a good rant for you guys. There's lead generation and there's branding. You guys are doing lead generation. Don't worry about quality. It's just a lead. And then the variable is, are they good at sales? If the client is like, I just want people that already know me, like me, trust me. They already know who I am. They already know what I'm about. All right, well then they can pay for 12 months of SEO before they get a lead. Or they could do content for 12 months. And then if they're good at content and people like them, they'll start getting leads. You guys with clients, I just, I don't, I don't believe in lead quality. I really, and I know that's kind of extreme, but you guys need to like get that in your head. It's most of you guys are like, how do I improve lead quality? No. How do you, the, the right question is, how do I get my clients to not suck at sales? So. I have a question. Uh, can I ask just real quick? because of the uh, lead forms uh, thing. Sure. Uh, I had a client, it was a wedding venue and like I made them a lead form ad and like a lot of people of these guy from this lead form, these leads, like some of them were like, didn't even speak German. I, I did this in Germany. They just speak Turkish, for example. And they told me like they accidentally clicked on the ad because it looked fancy or something like that. And Facebook does that, uh, the information get fills in automatically. So what to do about that? We we made it so that they had to manually put in their name, email, and phone number and uh, put, sh short an put short answers instead of the prefill. Yeah, let me show you guys something really quick on that note. By the way, make whenever you're um whenever you want a specific language, make sure you set the language at the ad set level. It actually does make a pretty big, um, pretty big difference. So <clears throat> if you're having if you're having issues with people just like auto filling forms and like not remembering that they that they uh let me just duplicate this form not remember that they filled out a form what you can do is under questions add a custom one short answer and best to reach you at now here's the problem if you put like best phone number to reach you at Facebook is going to detect that and they'll flag your ads because they want you to use the auto form stuff. Um, so you have to get creative with what you name stuff. And it, as long as you have at least one non auto fill question, it at least makes it fixes them, the issue. Yeah. Yeah. It at least makes them stop and be like, get out of that zombie mode. I, I've never experienced it. I've never just gone into zombie mode and filled out ads, but apparently some people experience this state and they fill stuff out but as long as you have one manual entry question it should fix that issue for you yeah i think like the phone number is probably the most important yeah yeah but like yeah also guys here's a good lesson for you guys most clients are liars so people would rather lie than admit that they suck yeah even if some of your leads are Turkish, like, why aren't they closing the German ones? You know, like even within, even within our own businesses, uh, the, the salespeople that complain about lead quality are always the less good salespeople. Like the, the ones that are good just get closes regardless. All right. Thank I, you. Yeah. Clients are liars. Yeah.
I, I, I forget if I told you guys this story or who I told this story, but I had a client who was like, I'm the best closer on the, in the world. This dentist. This is back when we helped dentists in Kairos at like 40 K a month. And then we had decided to go on an all in with Kairos. But I remember this guy was like, I'm the best closer. You send me a lead. I'll close. Send me a lead. I'll close him. I'm like, all right. And then like two weeks later, he's like, these leads suck. Awful. Blah, blah, blah. And then I call, I pretended to be a lead and I signed up and I literally, uh, I think I told people in agency lab this, but I like made my voice really high pitched <laughs> and I pretended to be a girl <laughs> and like, I called him and I was like, like, hi, <laughs> it's like, yo, I was like, I'm going to get this guy. And I caught him. You know what he said? He said, Hello? I'm not going to do the voice for you guys, but I responded with, uh, yeah, I saw that this Facebook ad. Are you guys, um, are you guys still offering the $500 discount and consultation for dental implants? He goes, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take down your info. It's like the guy didn't follow the script at all. He literally picked up and said, hello, if you're calling in for a $30,000 procedure, that is not only financially a big commitment, but also a physically big, like big commitment because you're having to, it's, it's an, it's an invasive, like it's an intense procedure. Like there's also a lot of mental commitment. There's fear. Like you're having to redo your entire mouth. Like that is an invasive procedure. And you call the doctor and they go, hello. You would never pay him $30,000. He didn't follow our script. And then I called him out on it. And then he quit. He was like, I'm canceling. <laughs> but whatever. He sucked at sales. And he was lying to me. You can always secret shop your clients. It's one of the biggest hacks. And if you guys are ever not sure, if you're not, I mean, if you're ever not sure, just call the leads yourself. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you dial, if you dial through the leads or if you do a voicemail drop to the leads if we, for clients that said the leads suck, we were always able to pull, uh, pull good leads out of it. So they're just bad. I didn't um, do a good job afterwards. Cause I, when I called them later, I was like, very, I was like, I got you. And it was, it was not the right tone. <laughs> yeah all right guys i'm going to make a quick note the call is being recorded the resources will be dropped in discord the replay the slides the google doc google docs so no need to worry yeah you you won't have to watch through all this again to get the materials i promise um all right, cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to show you guys how to set up statewide ads. Again, what you're going to learn here, you're going to learn how to set up a domain. You're going to learn how to install a pixel properly. You're going to learn how to set up aggregated events for iOS 14. So your ads don't fatigue over time. So if you ever intend to run to a landing page ever for anything, this is important, even if you don't run statewide ads. So step one, you have to connect your domain to uh, go high level. So let's grab our domain. Isaac, bro, I think you need to refresh your uh, go high level page. Right, there we go. Oh, never mind. Thank Jesus. <laughs> I was like, why is it not connecting? Uh, Select funnel. I thought I like forgot how to do it for a second, which would not have been like the best thing. Um, okay. So step one for, for anybody who missed what just went down. Um, you want to go in here? and uh, create either a CNAME record with www pointed at uh, flash.funnels.messagesender.com uh, to connect it to uh, go high level, or you can do the uh, A record pointing to this IP, I think it's called an IP. Um, make sure you have the www before in there and make sure 
the host field is www i like namecheap for all my domains it's so much simpler than uh godaddy and all, all these other ones and also their chat support will like do shit for you like if something's like actually messing up um and you hit up namecheap chat support like within 10 minutes they'll get a rep on with you and they'll actually like do it for you which is crazy like it's really good um so number one, if when you're running uh, ads to a site, you have to connect the domain to the uh, to the funnel. So let's make sure this is all connected up. Perfect. Now, I created a survey. Um, I think you, Joel, do they have the go high level from last week, or how does that work? What do you mean from last week? Did we, for the TikTok, did we share like the go high level template? Yeah, we did. Okay, cool. You guys should have this survey template in there. Go high level was like the, the bane of my existence when it comes to live training. Cause it'll, it'll just like freeze and there's like nothing you can do about it. Okay, cool. Survey one, ignore uh you guys remember you, you got to modify this like this is just it just has the right settings um like if you go under here uh i see the important one question at a time is the important setting here uh progress bar as well so what i'm going to do is we have the survey page this is where we're going to run all the ads to if we're running uh statewide we need to make sure that the survey on submit goes to the thank you page. So on submit, open URL, change the thank you page in there, save survey. Now, when we fill out the survey, it'll go to the thank you page. So the setup is very simple. Connect domain, run traffic to the survey page. Once the survey is submitted, you go to the thank you page. Your client might have a calendar that once you add to the thank you page, they might have a, phone, a click to call phone number, talk to your client about what's what's best. Usually I do calendar for most niches. Um, but yeah, step two, after we connect our domain to high level and we make sure the survey is connected well, we need to go into uh, Facebook and connect the domain. A lot of people skip this. I'll tell you the problems with skipping this here in a second. So what you wanna do, you want to go to your business settings, Let me verify this. Then you're going to go down here to brand safety here on the left when you're in business settings and click on domains. Now we're going to hit add domain right here uh create a new domain we're going to grab our domain from namecheap add it in and the easiest way to do this is to click here and click this last one update the dns text record within your domain registrar um you're going to hit copy where it allows you to hit copy to clipboard. You're going to go back to your domain. You're going to add new record. You're going to choose text record. You're going to put at in the host field. And you're going to paste that piece of code it allowed you to copy. And we're going to hit check mark. Let that put that in. And if God is on our side today, the domain will verify. All right. Sometimes we have to hit it 20 times like we did with high level. So Joel, do you have any stories you want to tell? No, you can just keep working. Okay, cool. The the most exciting part of this uh of this is the 10 minute unbroken footage of me clicking verify domain. Now, here's the part where you doubt yourself and you ask yourself that I put it incorrectly, text record at host field. Yep. Let's 
to refresh. I've also had it take me 70, 72 hours like for, for all that to be verified. I'm not sure if that's going to be the same case here or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, usually my luck is better, but it's, it's, uh, it's looking like it's going in that direction. Hmm. Okay. Maybe I just release a loom on how to create aggregated events for you guys then. Cause, um, we can't create aggregated events unless if the domain is verified, unfortunately. Um, okay. We'll figure it out. Let's go. Okay. So let's pretend we just verified the domain. What we're going to do next is install the pixel on the funnel. So we're going to go to events manager. And let's use seven figure agencies pixel. We'll click into that. You might have to create a new pixel if you don't have one created. It's just hit when you go to the screen, it'll just be a blank page. It'll say like create pixel. You're going to hit from a new website. When you hit add events from a new website, install code manually, and you're going to grab this base code right here and you're going to copy it. Then we're going to go back to the high level. And we're going to put it on both pages. So I'm going to open up the editor view of both of these pages. Settings, tracking code, paste. Yes, save, save. Then we have our thank you page. settings, tracking code, paste, save. Everybody does different ways to install the pixel. There's like five different ways to install a pixel. What I'm showing you guys right now is I've never seen it go wrong. <laughs> I've never seen it completely like fail tracking when you just manually install it directly into the pages header code. You can do it other ways. This way is super, super reliable. It's like the caveman way of doing it, but it works really well. What you're gonna do next is you're gonna Google meta standard events, meta standard events. This page is the first page that's gonna show up in Google. Then you get to choose what event you want to be your conversion. The conversion being what you set at the ad set level for it to optimize for. This is the code that you only want to fire on the thank you page. So leads that make it through the submit the survey that are redirected to the thank you page. What code do you want to fire on that page? It actually does not matter what code you pick from here. You can choose wish list, add to cart, complete registration. All of these function exactly the same way. I know it's like way sexier just to choose like lead because it's like what we're doing, but you can choose any of these. Um, just so you guys have that information in case if you ever like use multiple of your standard events and you think like, oh, I can't use purchase for leads. It doesn't matter. They all operate the same way. I'm going to choose lead for simplicity in this, in this training though. Now we're going to go to the thank you page. Again, the page that we want that code to fire on, tracking code. And we're going to scroll down until you see this little piece of code right here. FBQ track page view semicolon. And we're going to paste our code in right after. I'll do it in slow motion. Put your scroller right after the page view semicolon. Paste it in. Now we save. What will happen now is that lead event will fire on the thank you page. Only on the thank you page. Won't fire on this page because this page only has the base code. We just put that on there for retargeting. We're going to close these. We don't need them open anymore. Uh, what's this? We don't need that open anymore. So now our, our survey is we got the domain on there. We verified the domain, theoretically verified the domain. We installed the pixel. We put the standard event that we wanted to fire on there. And now the final step is we are going to go, just cancel this out, confirm. Under our pixel, you'll see a tab here called aggregated event measurement. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna hit configure web events for our pixel. 
Now, we can't, let me see if the domain's verified. I'm gonna, cause you have to have a domain verified before you actually do this step. So let me check it one more time. Uh, agency lab example leads, verified domain. Yeah, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Okay, I'm just gonna choose another random domain. Guys, pretend this is the domain that we just verified. So pr pretend this is agencylabexampleleads.com. Your domain won't show up here until it's verified. We're going to hit manage events. Edit. Choose our pixel. Choose whatever standard event we just uh, put on the thank you page. And then we're going to hit apply. What that just did is it made it so that standard event that we, we put on the thank you page is now the most prioritized uh, conversion event for our campaign that we're about to create using the seven figure agency pixel. Um, th what I just did is the foundation of running landing page ads. Now it's actually time to build out some ads. So we'll pretend we're doing statewide mortgage in Ohio. Yo, can we drop some W's in the chat for Isaac? He's literally showing you how to build everything. Yeah, this is A to Z, guys. Um, let's do, we're going to do leads. Everyone, yo, I wish you could do this fast, but it's like actually <laughs> impossible, <laughs> you know? Yeah, unless if I just like snort caffeine or something maybe we could do it faster but this is like max nah. we're going at um create a new campaign leads campaign make sure you choose manual um we're going to name this mortgage example let's uh advantage campaign budget yeah Ch turn advantage campaign budget on and usually for mortgage you're going to have a higher budget Let's say forty dollars per day. Just depends. Um, this is the only case ever in pretty much any niche where you will use campaign budget over ad set budget. Only on statewide lead generation ads, or if you're covering a massive area like half the state, this is the only scenario where you're going to do uh, campaign budget. Now what we're going to do is actually from mortgage, we're going to select um, housing for the special ad category. Now, if you're not in the special ad category, you can do age ranges. So if you're in personal injury, if you're in solar, if you're in, uh, I think, I don't know if life insurance has a special ad category. Mortgage can't do age ranges. Normally what I do is three ad sets, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, 45 to 54. In most statewide lead generation niches, those are your three ad sets. You can't do that anymore in housing niches like mortgage. So what we do is we just do an open targeting and we do an interest targeting. Um, open is self-explanatory. By the way, we're going to select website. We're going to select seven figure agency pixel and we're going to select. That is not my conversion event. By the way, I did not make a conversion event called hose. Um, conversion event lead. The one that we just prioritized for the domain is the one we're going to choose uh, for the pixel. Um, dynamic creative, you can turn it on or off. Most of the time though, I, I would just recommend just do two or three ads underneath the ad set level. Location, let's choose Ohio. The best state in the United States, everybody knows it. People living in are recently in this location. We can't change age ages because it, uh, it's housing, but normally you do 25 to 34, 35 to 50. 44, 45 to 54, if you're doing like personal injury or any other niche. This is our open targeting ad set. So we're not going to touch detailed targeting. We are going to put English on though. 
uh, placements, manual placements, just Facebook and Instagram newsfeed. This is something that everybody always forgets. Attribution setting, one day click. Whenever you're running conversion ads, the best attribution setting generally is one day click. You can test the other ones in the future, but this is the best to start. Okay, we did everything right. Let's go to our ads. Pack to delivery. So it's gonna keep saying this because we weren't able to verify the domain. If you actually verify your domain properly, you won't encounter that issue. We're gonna copy our survey page as the page that we drive traffic to, put it onto the website URL. Um, leave all that alone. Yeah, we can't, we can't, we can't do it. Um, okay. Website, uh, image, add image. Primary text, get a new mortgage on your home, headline, you need a new mortgage. Obviously use one of the mortgage uh, ad copies from our swipe file. Description, I don't, I don't do one. Call to action, learn more. Website, uh, we got our survey. And guys, if you don't verify the domain and this, you get all this iOS 14 stuff, what will happen to your ads is they'll perform at first, but then two or three weeks in, they'll crash suddenly. Um, this is what I've observed with people that don't verify the domain. So it's very important to make sure your domain is verified before you actually start running the ads. I don't want that. Cool, we got everything done here. Now, because this is mortgage again, we can't do age ranges. So we're just going to hit duplicate here. And we're going to add a bunch of random mortgage related interest. So we're just going to go in here, mortgage, mortgage loans, mortgage calculator, first time buyer, property finder starter home you're going to go through here and add anything at all that is either directly related to mortgage or like tangentially related to mortgage meaning it's like real estate people looking for a home um go through here and just cram as many interest in as possible um and then what you'll notice is let's name this interest just for so you guys can visualize it what you guys will notice is if you're doing age ranges, you're going to have three here. If you're doing mortgage, you're going to have two. The, the campaign is going to push most of the budget towards a top performer or a top two performer. You can turn off the rest. So like, let's say it starts pushing all my budget towards the open and it starts crushing. I'm just going to turn off the regular interest to make sure it doesn't waste any budget there. Um, yeah, that's that's, that's the A to Z of setting up uh, statewide ads. Let me see if there's any other details I have on here. Oh yeah, I did link that survey example so you guys can see what a really good survey looks like to uh, to copy. Um, Joel, do, do we have anything else to cover? Are we done? Yeah, that's the full build guys, out. For... I'm so lucky because I have Isaac, so I don't have to think about any of this stuff. <laughs> Someone yesterday was like, Joel, where do you run your funnel? Do you have your funnels and go high level? And I was like, I don't, I, I would not be able to know where to find it. So Isaac, um, let me see if I had anything else for you guys. One sec. You're great guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Isaac is the ads goat for sure.
can you tell him a funny story of how your ad got ripped off? Oh, I mean, <laughs> you mean my ad for personal injury lawyers? Yeah. Is it so yeah, in the personal industry, personal injury industry, everybody had been running Facebook ads for like the longest time. And I filmed this YouTube ad for personal injury. It was the first YouTube ad I ever ran for personal injury. And it has like millions of views at this point. Like I think it's one of the top viewed lead gen ads on the YouTube platform currently. And it's ever. just me. It's just me looking like a lawyer. I even have these three paintings. I never say I'm a lawyer, but you know, I look the part, um, comb the hair to the side, the whole thing. And it's just me talking about how people can benefit by doing the survey. Oh, it's hilarious. Me. Isaac is all over this weird black hole of YouTube because <laughs> people ripped his ad. <laughs> well, yeah, now because that ad works so well, it's still being used, but it's like remixed. Like, uh, it, like if you look at like people's like TikTok content, how they like take one video and they like remix it a bunch of ways. There's like music behind me. I sound like an inspirational speaker in some of the videos. They got like car accident families, like, you know, in front of cars, like crying. And it's just like remixes of this ad. So that's that my wild. face. I'm so glad I didn't say my name in the ad because I'd probably have to like leave the country or something. And it would be a massive problem. But, yeah, it's it's actually wild. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Uh, for next week, we're doing an event in Miami, so we won't be able to do a session. It'll be the following week, so we're gonna continue on December fifteenth. All right, same time, December fifteenth. That's the next session. Today we covered how to run ads, pretty much. Next week we're gonna cover two things really important: go high level. And remember I talked about helping the clients get better at becoming better entrepreneurs. We're going to help you guys get your clients to be better entrepreneurs. So that's going to be the next session around client results. So how do we actually book the appointments once we get the leads with go high level, the scripts, resources, all that good stuff, how to actually set up go high level. And then we're going to talk about like how to actually help your clients close deals and get better at sales. So fortunately the event is like ultra, ultra, ultra sold out. I, yeah, unfortunately, but I would invite you guys. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's already a fire hazard. Like right yeah, I already, my team is going to have to st stand outside. I already told them that's pretty much it. Um, we got 10 minutes, so we'll do Q and a for 10 minutes. Hi, is, can I ask a question to Isaac? Yeah, uh, yeah, let's so. let's do that. But then after that, um, yeah, raise your hand and we'll, I'll call you guys one by one. But yeah, go for it. Go first, and then moving forward, raise your hand and I'll call on you guys. All right, thank you, um, Isaac. If you were to start in a local lead gen niche, would you start with TikTok ads or would you do Facebook ads? I would test both. Um, m most agencies right now are gonna the best performance is going to be running a hybrid. So like test both for your clients, see where the performance is. Some niches are like crazy good on, on TikTok right now. Like chiropractor is super good. Dental implants is super good. You just got to test them out. Um, some niches are going to be like 50, 50, like some areas will work better on Facebook. Some areas will work better on TikTok. You can have them as backups to each other. So if you remember the troubleshooting slide of like, mm. you know, test the eight ads, that method, you can also throw in, you know, test TikTok ads on there or vice versa. You just got to see what performs best for most of your clients and kind of run with it that way. All right. Would you think it's 50, 50 for med spas or maybe it's a good chart for med spas? I'm pretty sure we, I, I've talked to people that, med spas are doing really, really well for them. Um, you need good, you need good ads. Uh, but I'm pretty sure med spas crush it on TikTok. Med spas do well on Facebook too. They're kind of a, their initial kind of does well everywhere. So you can probably go both ways with that one, honestly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's go to Josh. Thank you. Uh, Isaac, just to clarify, are you just testing one creative inside the ad set? Like when you duplicate it, or are you doing multiple? Just one creative for the eight ad set method. Um, that's when you're dialed in. If you're still figuring out what careers work for your niche, you can throw in two or three underneath the ad set. But even then, it's the same two or three under all the ad sets. You're not, you don't need like 20 ads or anything. Gotcha. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for everything. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, okay, so I am working with like local mattress and furniture stores, and my cost per lead has been wild. Like the first one that I launched, I um I did uh purchase like in purchases with in or uh, with an offer, and I it started at like four or five dollars a cost a uh, lead, and then got up to almost ten, and then subsequent campaigns got up to like. 20 30 dollars and then i just relaunched a new one and i got like five ads for like less than three dollars overnight and yeah. then i haven't like gotten anything for like four, 24 hours since like i got the five ads overnight and then nothing since then it's been like like a day and a half so it's just like why is it so sporadic <laughs> yeah so don't when you're when you're doing media buying you can't pay attention to like 24 hour anomalies the, these okay. platforms are too random to pay attention day to day um, so okay. you kind of have to, if, you, if there's a bad day, you kind of just have to ignore that. I look at everything on a three day time scale. So what is the cost per lead on a three day time scale? Um, if, if, it, if it, they truly have fatigued, number one, test a different ad set structure, like maybe test the ad set structure. Yeah. I'm not course. doing that. I'm doing the, I'm just doing basically the broad open right now. Yeah. Test the ad set, but also you may need to rotate, uh, creatives. I don't know the population of the area you're yeah. in. Um, but I, I would change your ad set structure first and then yep. l- look at changing creatives to keep it fresh. Cause there, th- if, if you're in an area long enough and the ads crush it for long enough, there eventually is creative fatigue. Um, yeah. And one more question. Do you know, like what would be an ideal cost per lead for like mattress, local mattress stores? Like I really. We're working with one, um, not his name's James. I'm not going to mention the, the last name, but yeah, it's they're, fine. They're, they're crushing it. Um, I can ask them and let you know next time. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking like 15 bucks, 10 to 15 bucks might be decent, but I've gotten it, like I said, for less than $4. So. Offer. Yeah, that's really solid. If that, if that fatigues, open up the audiences, try different audiences. That's my first week. The second week that I told my team was always change the creative. Yeah. Change the, ge- or, so audiences would be like radius or gender. Yep. Then we would test the creative. Then after that, we would actually have multiple offers that we would rotate through. Okay. Yeah. And I've been, and do you guys know, like I'm running uh, actually unique creative video. Do you know, like I'm going to start testing images just to see, but any insight on images versus videos? I mean, images are easier when things fatigue. Um, they, they, the the performance between videos and images is going to vary from niche to niche. I would definitely test images because it'll make your life easier if they perform. Uh, yeah. And they're, they're way easier to rotate, obviously, than video. Sure. Although, if the video, um, if you can film different intros or different hooks at the beginning, you can often keep a video fresh just by changing the first five to 10 seconds, depending on how it's filmed. Yep. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hey, guys. I have a quick question. Uh, um, are there wait, any wait, so- wait, wait, you have to get in line, unfortunately. Uh, you have to raise oh. your hand and okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I just want to be respectful. Um, I think it's Hamza, then Norris, then Andrew, and then Ho- I think we'll probably, yeah, man, out. thanks. Um, basically, I, w- I want to ask, ask this uh, in this statewide niches. Um, basically, you can get the leads, but how do you uh, make them book the appointments? Basically, how do you nurture those leads? We talk about where uh, it's going to be, uh, the next master class yeah it's, it's all go high level go high level and and calling the calling. Leads very oh, frequently. Right. yeah and also why do we um do campaign budgets for statewide niche, niches and not um asset le- and not asset budgets it just weirdly performs better which campaign budgets generally don't perform better anywhere but for statewide there's something special about them the reasoning i don't know um, ad set budgets can still perform. It's not like they don't perform for a statewide. I've just seen better performance overall from campaign budgets for them. Oh, right. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Norris. Yo, what's going on? Just have a few quick questions. Um, You'll be at the Miami event. I will be. But you got a ticket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got a ticket earlier. So yeah, yeah definitely pumped for that for sure. Yeah, it'll be great, man. See you soon. Yeah. But um yeah, first question I have is what's like an expected like cost per lead for a uh, uh for, for an attorney? For personal injury? Uh in this case it would be a uh like a workers comp, but yeah, it's sort of the same thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah same thing. 
I, I actually, I think workers comp generally come in a little bit cheaper. Um, the, the thing with personal injury is there's massive state to state variance. So like in some states you can get leads uh, for like sub $60, like below $60. By the way, I'm speaking of qualified leads. So within the last two years, it doesn't already have another attorney. So there, there's filters on these. These are cost per filtered lead. Um, below 60 is good in a lot of areas. Uh, below 150 is still very good in a lot of states. In California, um, you got to charge clients like 350, 300 to 350 per lead because uh, the, the leads are going to cost you like, you know, 200, 250 at least, um, mm -hmm. depending, you know, it, it lower at lower budget. Sometimes campaigns can perform better. Um, but what are you paying right now per lead? I'm about to get started with them next week. I just uh, enrolled them, but they're based out of uh, North Carolina. Okay. I, I would say as long as you're paying below 150 per qualified lead, it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do I give them the expectation? Um, Cause they're, they've been running ads towards uh, optimizing for clicks and now I'm doing it for a lead. So how do I walk them through that expectation of like the ads being different? Joel, maybe you can, Joel's yeah, more next... of the expectation guy than me. Yeah. Isaac is like, <laughs> I'm going to just get him leads and I'm going to be like, if you don't call the leads, you suck. That's yeah. me. All right. Uh, next week, I'll give you guys, I can just give it to you now, but um, next week we're going to go much more into it, but like here, check this out. We might not have time for more questions, guys. I mean, unless Isaac, you want to stay on. Well, no, this is my Zoom, but I guess we can figure it out. Um, so I do a whole launch call presentation when I onboard the client. If you already onboarded the client, you could just say, hey, before we go live, I have a few more things we need to go over. This is what I call the training wheels version. This is the one that I would give my team members when they needed to learn how to set expectations because it's really hard to teach someone to set expectations. It's really scary, especially when, talk, when you're talking to an attorney. It's hard to be like, you know, clear and direct, right? So like, I'm. this is word for word. Literally, it sets expectations. If you get a ton of leads one week and then zero the next, or if it dies out for two to three days, most of you guys are freaking out. You guys are all like freaking out, but this is me right here. I'm chilling, I'm chilling. It's normal. It's normal if the leads slow down because there's nothing to worry about. It's all part of the process. We've had clients go from zero leads in a whole week to 19 leads in 48 hours. Your stomach is going to drop. And I tell them, you're literally going to get anxiety and your stomach is going to drop and it's going to feel that that roller coaster feeling where you're like, oh, we're not getting leads. You get that feeling in your stomach. You have to remember the stock market. You have to remember the stock market analogy, which I shared I shared earlier. Where is it? Here. I just skipped that slide. Remember the stock market analogy. It can go up and down, but over time, as long as it's going up, that's all that matters. So hang tight, be patient, and give us at least one week for things to kick in and just try to relax a little bit. Take some time. Give us at least a week if things aren't clicking. And remember, we look at the ads every 48 business hours, so there's nothing to worry about. So like, I'm really setting expectations. You don't want to do that. Don't copy those slides because if you say that word for word, on the, they're going to be like getting tired. This is more for you to learn how to set expectations than take these slides and then make it shorter. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah, like if you if you read that word for word, it's gonna be uh the lawyer is gonna be like, I need to get off this call. But if that's more for you to learn how clear you have to really be when it comes to expectations. So make sense? Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's do Andrew, last one. So, um, some quick questions. Uh, in regards to the eight ad set method, I guess it's for Isaac. Um, you'd be looking at spending between like 150 to $200 if the cost per lead is like six to $8 in the first two days. So can you really only use this method if you got like a crazy ad budget? And if the ad budget is smaller, like, would you just use the same method, but low, what would be your strategy if the ad, monthly ad budget is less? Um, if the monthly ad budget is tremendously low, the, I mean, the, 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 it, 
their lead, they have to be willing to pay a certain amount per lead, right? So th- if, if leads in the niche are like $15, $20, if it's a more expensive niche, they have to have an ad budget that reflects that. So um, like at like a six or $700 ad budget, which is what we charge most of the time, um, you can do the eight ad set method with $5, $5 a piece per ad set. And then you just turn, turn off the losers after 48 hours. Um, it's not a problem, but if, if for whatever reason, they're closed on a super low budget and it's a more expensive lead niche, you pretty much have to start with the big ad set method. Um, there's really no way around it. What I did with Kairos was I literally only started with females with a five mile radius and I tested out three, like me and Isaac did it a little bit differently. I would do $10 for one ad, $10 for a second. Actually, no, I did two ads to start 15 and 15. I tested out two different creatives and it was females, five mile radius. And then also females, five mile radius, two different creatives. And that's all I did from just starting out. And it's like a really low budget, but remember, same offer, same, offer, same, everything. same, offer, same yeah. everything. I just changed a different creative and it was just females five, five mile radius. But at this point I was very confident that that was going to work. Like I, I'd ran it hundreds of times. I didn't need to test also like the big ads, the, the eight ad set method is more also for you guys to fi- find the winning ad sets quickly. Now I want to say one last thing, really important. One of the biggest, and I'll, I'll probably mention this again next week. One of the biggest levers for you guys to pull if you want to get good client results is getting them to spend more on ads that's one of the easiest ways to get them better results you think that it's more of an all-in investment and it is but you're also increasing their chances of getting an roi even if they spend more on ads yeah so like do whatever it takes to get as much ad spend as possible that's the, the lever your retainer is flat so it's like even if they spend more on ads they're still paying you the same but if they spend more ads, they have higher chances of actually getting closes and making their money back. So get them to spend more on ads and get them to agree to a crazy offer as well. Uh, it's mandatory. Yeah, otherwise yeah. they don't qualify for the guarantee. And um, we tell them, hey, I, I used to tell them, look, I can run the system however you want. You want me to put a picture of like a, you want me to put a picture of like a basketball on that? I can do whatever you guys want, but. I, I can't be responsible for whether or not we get results. So like, if you want me to run a crazy offer that, or a bad offer, I can, but then I don't know if I can get you results. All right. Just to get a rough scale um, in terms of like running those crazy offers, do most of the businesses you work with, do they agree to that? Or is it a lot of convincing to get them to agree to that? Because when they have to make a lot of revenue to justify like $21 plus they don't make money on it's like the 21 dollars just a way to get them in the door so it's like right they make their money by upselling them so they have to over have those processes in place yeah we'll talk about the sales process next week but like it's almost like if you guys signed up for a, a gym membership it's like 30 bucks a month and then they're like hey we actually have a personal training package is a thousand dollars that's where they make their money i guess it relates to that bell curve you showed us earlier too it'd be at the end of the bell curve right i'm 100 percent that sure that link is working by the way so i think it might just be you unless i i mean it's working for me Yeah, there's a lot of people on that link. It should be working. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys found it valuable. See you guys in two weeks.